Jake Wallace and I are at an interesting lake in the superior country of Ontario. It's called Whitefish Lake. Now this lake is a little bit unique in, in relation to a lot of other Canadian lakes. You know, you look at a lot of Canadian lakes and they're really precipitous drop-offs with a lot of deep water with a limited amount of shallow water. Whitefish Lake is a different story. There's a tremendous amount of shallow water cover. You know, I always like going out on new bodies of water, so this is gonna be an exploratory mission for us. Uh, we kind of heard and kind of figured that the fish are going to be relating to those greener cabbage weeds. So we're just going to go out and see what we can find. This lake is actually uncharted. And so what I have is my auto chart live on and I'm actually making a map as we're going to, over the next three or four days, we're going to make a sort of a detailed contour map from the lake. But you can see like auto chart live has a perimeter of all the, uh, the lakes in North America. So the nice thing about it is you can make your own map on lakes that are unmapped, of which a lot of Canadian lakes are, a lot of rivers are. We use AutoChart Live a lot for a lot of different fishing situations where you do not have a detailed contour map. You can see there's a depression up on this flat here of the deeper water. You can see that there's just even just a one or two foot drop. You get in shallow flats like this, just little one, one two foot drop offs are really pretty significant. This auto chart is really interesting in the fact of how fast you can uh, make a really accurate map of a little area. A lot of times once I get keyed in and we find a good spot, I'll drive around it really quickly like this to really analyze to garner a, a good picture of exactly how the uh, habitat's laid out or this underwater bottom composition is laid out. You can see what that is. It's just a, like a seven, eight foot depression in the middle of a big flat. This is unbelievable cabbage clumps in here. Got one. Oh, I had him. I had a fish there. There's a fish. Got him? Oh, yeah. Probably. What do you got? I don't know. Let's find out here. I think it almost looked like a big smallie. What? Nope. Nice walleye. Nice walleye? Nice walleye, yeah. Wow. Let me get, get the net out for him. Okay. Let's see. Go to you. Let's see. Whoop. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, yeah. What did he come on? There we go. There nice we go. fish. Nice. Wow. There we go. Boy, you can see that. The right cabitat, as soon as we got into that dense cabbage right clump. Right cabbage, there he was. Wow. Nice fish. Awesome, on the black VMC hair. Just ripping hair through the cabbage. Came up and smacked it. Awesome. There he goes. Now, I mean, it's crazy, these fish are in this cabbage. So we've been just driving around looking for the best weeds we can find out here. And we're sitting right around four and a half to maybe five feet. Found a huge cabbage bed and that was three casts in. Produced a nice walleye, so it just goes to show, you know. I mean, you find the right habitat, find the right weeds, you'll catch fish. Yeah, nice fish. Yeah, come here, buddy. I tell you, he got all of that. He hit, her, he hit her hard. Come here, buddy. That's a good one. There we go. Awesome, thanks for the scoop. Yep, look at that guy there. Ooh, ooh nice one. Boy, look how fat ooh. that is. That's one thing about these fish in this lake. Boy, they're, they got a, must have a tremendous amount of food because they all look like elephant. It's amazing on how well-to-do they are. We'll put it that way. Yeah, boy. Oh, that's a... Nice, there we there go. You go. Wow, look at that giant. Beauty. Okay, can I get a still cam, a still cam out For with this sure. one? For sure. Wow, that's a good one there. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's a big That one? Yeah, there we go. What species? Let's find out. Ooh, looks like a good one, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, he's got some shoulders to him for sure. Wow. Oh, nice smallie. Wow, pretty big one. Huh. 
Nice big smallie up in the reeds. Get him up here. How big is he, Jake? Looks Ooh. like a pretty sporty one. Yeah. Feisty. Wow. I'm trying to get the motor now. We'll bring him over on this side. Look at that. Oh, come on, buddy. This guy just has no quitting him. There he is, nice fish. They do a lot of walleye and perch fishing in here, but this lake actually has a huge population of giant smallies. hooked right in the top of the head there. Oh, there we go. Beauty. Look at that. Pretty fish. It's kind of light colored on the hair. There he goes. Is there rocks below us here? There's one. Oh, there's one. Quite a bevy of these little beasts in here. You know, that's one thing you come up on a trip like this is, Jake and I love catching any different species of fish that swim, so we're experimenting and looking around the lake, and uh, you see different habitats, so what we do is we actually have a lot of rods rigged for doing different things. We're fishing for walleyes, we've got some pike rods rigged, we've got some rods that'll sort of work for both smallmouths and walleyes, but we'll intermittently fish that. This is just like a little hard gravel spot in, you know, in front of the bulrushes, which actually in these types of lakes sometimes can hold walleyes as well as smallmouths. Sometimes you'll have big pike and fall up there. Oh, that was a biggie. That was another four or five pounder, four and a half quarter, quarter pounder. Yep. Ooh. Oh, another that big smallie. Holy Real macro. big smallie. Jake, you're really starting to impress me. I may have to have to put that, you're just throwing a, a black hair jig, yeah, throwing for anything. Hair. Nice fish, holy mackerel. Yeah, that's a, that is a Bubba, that's a, that's a whopper. That's what we're looking for. There's another one. Oh, another great big one. Oh, wow. Wow. He's a real leaping Lena. He was out, Jake, away from the uh, the edge of the bulrushes. He was out in front. There's actually like a little bit of a hard rocks that goes out, a little rock extension here. Come here, buddy. Not, not as big as Mr. J Jake's, but it's a, it's a pretty good one. That guy's tough. Yeah, feisty. There it is. There you go, wow. Beauty. And boy, did he just munch that hair jig. Just got all of it right there. You know, it's sort of intriguing that a lot of these lodge owners like uh, uh, Dave and Tammy, and where they used to t totally cater to more walleye and pike fishermen, in recent years, a lot more of these camp owners are actually catering to more of the bass market because of the quality of the smallmouth bass fishing in many of these lakes. I know a buddy of mine told me the exact same thing. We were coming up to Whitefish Lake and he goes, there's a really big bass in this lake. Oh, buddy. Yeah, I'm just gonna net him quick. Make it easy for myself. There we go. Cool. cool. Yeah, wow. Still a little chunk on the hair. I don't know what species this guy is. Must yeah. be another bass. Yep, great big one. Wow. Wow, that's a big one. Look at the size of that one. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Wow. Boy, on these windblown points, we've been experimenting out here. 
for our first mission. And it seems like if you get on these windblown bull rush points with a little bit of a drop off, there are some whopper smallmouth bass. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come on. Oh, nice. there you go. Nice Ooh, look fish. at that thing. Boy, there's some. I know one thing, boy. I know one thing as far as uh, <laughs> this lake is concerned for our brief stint out here. One thing it definitely has in it is some real whopper brownies. I know that there's a lot of nice walleyes in here too, but it's our experimental mission and it's a pretty good run. Let's get her back in the water. Look at the length of that thing. It's a big fish. Look at that darn thing. Look at a beautiful fish. Come here, buddy. Come here. Boy, there we go. It's one thing when you get to a new lake, you know, each different fish species is a lot of times on different types of habitat. We have caught a couple of walleyes on these spots, but it seems like smallmouths yeah. are really leaning on this. We still got some, some more work to do. I think those walleyes are out in those deeper flats, deeper weed flats in here. I do know one thing. The oh, look at that, popped off. Quality of the bass in this lake is really pretty incredible. Yeah, this is a beauty, Jim. All right, let's go head to the west side and go look for some perch, huh? Yeah, I got a variety of different small soft plastics. I use for per perch and panfish, big bite. A lot of different profiles. I got tubes, I got uh, grubs, you got some crickets, you got some uh, little bit two inch grubs, and then some little paddle tails as well. Perch, when you get on them, generally are not that particularly picky. And for a lot of panfish, I like to actually use, rather than really natural colored baits, I usually pretty brilliantly colored baits I like to, you can see I got the chartreuse and pinky on there. Interesting thing about this particular lake, that actually have a hundred limit per person. Perch. You know, one thing that when we're on an exploratory mission like this, you'll notice that a lot of the uh, baits on the deck are horizontal lures. And what I mean by that, baits that are moving pretty quickly through the water column, whether it's shallow, mid-range, or deep, we got a mix of different baits and the fact that what we're trying to do is cover a tremendous amount of water. We've never been on this lake. We, what we're trying to do is just get into an area that are holding fish and then we can refine with slower presentations once we identify where some fish are. Like we just went over that point right there, we're throwing little swim baits, he's throwing a hair jig. But we're moving pretty, pretty quickly. We're not spending a lot of time fishing, you know, got the trolling motor on, you know, 20% and just move, move, move. I appreciate that. Just we've been spoiled today with how many big smallies we've been getting. Thank you. Beauty. In fact, we're calling this small just shows you what kind of day we've been having. You know, we've only been on this lake for about four or five hours now, but the intriguing thing is, you know, one thing when you look at a, a lake like this that's really quite shallow, the whole lake is food shelf. You know, when you look at a lot of big big lakes where that really volume of deep water, that doesn't really have that much carrying capacity. It does in the fact that it's got deep water tulabies and ciscos, but realistically, a lot of the other game fish don't live out there. But this lake here, the whole lake is a food shelf. From one side to the other, fish can be anywhere. Walleyes will be up right out in the middle, of, you know, in the middle of the lake and they're just big monstrous weed beds everywhere. A lot of hard bottom rock spots off the tips of these peninsulas. Ooh, there's one. Oh, ooh, come on, buddy. Come here. Whoa, wow, look at that thing. That's a good one. You wanna go get this little rascal? For you? Hang on, hang on, huh? Hang on. Come on. Whoop, where is he? This guy's not ready yet. Here you go. Look at the size of Whoa! Oh. Man, that was a big bass, but hey, that happens. And one thing about these raptors, they're so nice. They're super quiet and they shoot down really quick and they hold you in place. And so that's been, you know, 
really helpful out here because we've been finding fish kind of scattered. And as soon as we get you know into a little pod, Jim pops the wrappers down and we just cast at them. Got one. Big gator. Yeah, big pike. Big gator. Yeah. No, it's a big walleye. It's a big, big walleye. No, it's a big walleye. All right, I'm getting in that. Let it go, Jim. Maybe. It's big, whatever it is. Big walleye, great big one. Look at that, like a big one, like an eight pounder. Whoa. Wow. You know, we've been fishing a lot of uh, different weed spots and actually our best finding these walleyes in whitefish, actually we've got an inside weed lines that actually transition into rocks. And uh, the last number of better sized fish is what we've been doing. Wow, this is a biggie. Come here, buddy. There you go. Come here. Come on. Oh. There you go. That's a whopper. What do you think about her? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, look at that. That's a beautiful fish, man. That's a whopper walleye. Man, Jim, that is a tank. Yeah, look at that thing there. Boy, she just crunched on it. Look at that. Wow. That's a beautiful walleye, no question about it. They actually catch quite a few of them in this lake like this, apparently. You know, 29 to 30 inches. The thing is, you're fishing shallow water when you're fishing Whitefish Lake, no matter whether you're fishing for big pike, walleyes, giant smallmouth bass, perch. You wanna grab a, a still camera and shoot a couple of shots for social media purposes. Absolutely. It's a biggie. Beautiful fish, look at that thing. Great big one. You know, throughout the year, we actually use a lot of soft plastics for walleyes. And uh, we use two specific profiles and for a very specific reason. Uh, number one is a straight tail bait. This is a uh, big bite jerk minnow with a straight tail. And then as well as we have a suicide shed. This is a 3.5 big bite suicide shed with a boot tail. The biggest thing is, is with these two different profiles is the action, how that bait moves in the water. This suicide shed actually has a lot more loping action. As you pop it up with the tail, it slows the vibration and it fall or slower. With the jerk minnow, the bait fish is a lot more erratic in the water. It's a lot more up and down and you know, erratic behavior in parts into the bait. And sometimes each one can be critical to trigger more fish into biting. Now, Jim and I have been using a lot of different horizontal presentations today. And the spinning rod I've been using is the St. Croix Bass X in a 7.1, medium power with a fast action. I've got it paired up with a Daiwa Acceler in the 2500 size. Um, this reel is super light and it's got a super smooth drag system, which is really important when we're fighting these bigger fish. Uh, we've got it spooled up with eight pound Suffix 832 braid. And on the business end here, we've got an eight to 12 pound uh, Suffix fluorocarbon leader. This is a super universal setup that's great for a bunch of different fish species. Nice walleye, like about a four pounder. Wow. I'm gonna take them around the other side rather than taking them downwind here. Come here, buddy. Oh! There we go, nice fish. Yeah, come here, buddy. Take him up upwind side? Yeah, that'd be easier. Whoa. That's a good one. Boy, he really punched it. Wow. Nice. Swim bait. For the little time we've been on whitefish, we actually, we've caught some really big fish of all different species. Sort of an interesting body of water. It's very shallow but fabulous fishing, big whoppers of all different species.